The lore just never ends here with Cathay. We got another little drop from Games Workshop, and I'm sorry I'm a little late to covering this. I really wanted to talk about the Monkey King and the Ivory Road, but there's a lot of really nifty things that can be gleaned from this article. And what we're going to do is go through the lore hidden hidden it's not hidden it's overt the, the lore in this article and discuss some of the stuff that games workshop talks about in regards to three things in the uh, kind of cafe and roster reveal so far right we're going to be talking about one of legendary lords we're going to talk about the uh, terracotta sentinels <clears throat> as well as the um flying ships of Cathay. So join me in discussing this because at the very end, I'm going to discuss some speculation that will probably link us to what might be, you know, evident of the other siblings of the uh, dragon, well, other siblings of the legendary lord, as well as the children of the dragon emperor, right? We know that there are multiple children of the dragon emperor, and we don't know much more outside of the two we've heard about so far. So <clears throat> in this video, I think we get some context clues as it as it kind of relates to chinese not mythology but the four symbols of chinese i don't even know what to really call it I guess, yeah, mythological creatures so mythology we'll go with chinese mythology <clears throat> and the phases behind that and wu jing and everything a lot of stuff that we talked about during three kingdoms so this all plays together so join me as we kind of dive through here on some units for the Cathayan roster as well as some possible speculations of the two other legendary lords or to other possible legendary lords for Cathay. And again, it, like I said, it, it's pretty straightforward here. So we're gonna kind of sweep through this and a lot of this so far is, uh, for the most part, what we already know. Um, also new from Forge World, you can buy these models. But going down further here, <laughs> um, I'll zoom us in a little bit more. Nothing up to this point has been really new. It, it just pretty much was saying, hey, you know, you probably have heard about Cathay and no one really knows much about it. Yeah, we know we don't know much about it. But as we get into this, we get to, into Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, our first legendary lord that we see in the trailer for Cathay, um, with her brother hopefully coming soon with some sort of trailer, gameplay, whatever it is, um, or at least just information on him. But Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon here, we get some information as far as, far as her creation into essentially an 8th edition uh roster more or less right that they've said in the previous games workshop article that they were that, that cafe has been reimagined as an eighth edition roster with full set of rules so i would imagine we'll probably see some models for this there keeps becoming more and more hands some twitter posts from the warcom team so on and so forth so we might actually see something of them coming in warhammer the old world or maybe even in an age of sigmar with cafe kind of reborn in that so uh i guess the future holds the, the answer there, but. The undisputed star of the cinematic trailer is Miao Ying, daughter of the Celestial Dragon Emperor and one of the divine rulers and provincial commanders of Grand Cathay. And just more concept sketches here as we get into her little lore blurb here. So for Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, ruler of the Northern Provinces and the Great Bastion, master of the Storm Winds, a supreme matriarch of Nangao. The Storm Dragon rules over Northern Cathay and commands the armies of the Great Bastion. Cold and aloof, the Storm Dragon has ruled over the Great Bastion for centuries after its defense was entrusted to her by the Celestial Dragon. Largely considered the favorite of their father by the other dragons, the Storm Dragon lords her position over her siblings, and when they meet, often stands apart from them. So again, her siblings. We already know that there is more than just one, and plenty of lore has said the Celestial Dragon's children, the Warring States kind of period that they talked about as it hinted towards the Monkey King in the last lore topic that we talked about. Um, so... There's already this this illusion that there's far more of the children in the kingdom. And she already stands in her own mind, you know, head and shoulders above them. But despite her power, the Storm Dragon has a significant task in the defense of the North, and her armies are almost constantly at war. Added to this is the independence of the Lords of Nangao, whom she relies upon to arm the Great Bastion with their wondrous war machines. Outwardly, they work together, but the lords often scheme amongst themselves and against her, dividing her attention from the empire's enemies beyond the wall. Her valued position also means her father entrusts her with important tasks, some of which can put her at odds with her siblings, especially if she is required to deal with the chaos incursions within the empire itself. So nothing crazy is revealed here, but let's pay pretty close attention to her color, the coloration of her armor, 
uh, of her dress, of her dragon itself, right? It's this big, white, and onyx-colored dragon with all this, the uh, uh, electricity zapping around it, the storm dragon, right? So this is important. It's going to come back around, I promise. And mention, or uh, especially pay attention to her direction, that, that she is, uh, the cardinal direction she's in charge of, the north. We'll get we'll get back to that. But moving into the Terracotta Sentinels, um, it's pretty kind of... I actually really like the lore of these uh, in the sense that, you know, when you think of automatons, you think of low, slow, cumbersome um, constructs. <laughs> uh, especially when you look at the Tomb Kings, right? Or you look at anything else in the Warhammer world or in fantasy in general, you expect something to kind of move slowly for the size that it has but i really kind of like this approach to taking this large huge automaton that's jumping around and slashing and cutting things uh, it's almost like watching sucker punch but i like the kind of stance that they've taken here as well the, that these automatons are, are extremely old so the terracotta sentinels are creations born of the dragon's mastery of the elemental winds each one a towering animated statue fashioned in the form of a great warrior Often they are found carved into the size of the great bastion itself, their helmets and spears making up its battlements, their bodies its buttresses. They can also, however, be found throughout the Empire, often standing watch over fields, bridges, and cities, unmoving until they are animated for war. Legend has it that these sentinels are the gigantic soldiers of an army built by the Dragon Emperor thousands of years ago, when chaos threatened to overwhelm the Empire. Since then, they have been left scattered across Cathay, waiting to be called to war once more. So we know that the Dragon Emperor took to the field of battle during the Great Catastrophe, right? When when uh, chaos was everywhere. And we don't know much about that time period and how the Dragon Emperor was able to fend off uh, the incursion of chaos. You know, we know that the, the old ones... Uh, we're here and there. They know that we, they were in Koresh, but we don't really know exactly the relationship between uh, Cathay and the fallen uh, city in Koresh and if they maybe had a relationship, if they helped each other in the uh, Chaos Incursion. So I'd be really curious to know more of that information, right? To kind of dip into that ancient lore. But obviously, if you have a whole army of these guys, it might be a little bit easier to fight greater demons. So moving forward here, we also have Kong Ming Sky Lanterns and Sky Junks. So I'm a little confused. And maybe you guys can help me out on this and, and what you kind of think uh, about from what the lore says here. But basically, the Cathayan, here's this little, we'll read this real quick. The Cathayan maintain, the Cathayans maintain fleets of aerial vessels comprising Kong Ming Sky Lanterns and larger sky, sky junks to keep watch over their borders. In the trailer, a flight of these aircraft took to the skies to battle the airborne elements of the Xinxian foes. So when I think junk, I, not to be confused with someone hitting you in the junk, I think of an actual ship, a large ship. From what we're going to read in the two, in, in the description of both the Sky Lanterns and the Sky Junks, I think that they're saying this is the Sky Lantern and this is the Sky Junk, which does not make much sense to me. So let's read further and I'll, I'll, I'll go into this a little bit more. Also, interesting choice of name, Kong Ming. That is the uh, courtesy name for uh zhu liang the uh obviously the the character from three kingdoms and he used lanterns to alert um basically his presence during i think it's the siege of pinying uh, but basically he uses those lanterns and the lanterns are either because of him using it or they're they're a correlation between his headdress looking very similar to them so uh a little bit of a 3k jab right there okay creative assembly or games workshop whoever did it but it's there i i saw it i uh, caught note but looking at the uh, Kong Ming Sky Lantern and the Sky Junk here, so let's read this real quick and you guys can tell me what you think. But Kong Ming Sky Lanterns are used by Cathayan armies to observe enemies from on high as well as direct troops in battle. Held aloft by a caged vermilion warbird, the creature's burning wings giving the great balloon lift, a Sky Lantern holds an armored gondola beneath its bulk. From this gondola, one of the Lord Magistrate's best strategists uses fans and banners to signal troops or direct the fire of the army's war machines. Should enemy flyers or missile troops get too close, a pair of crane gunners snipe them from their exceptional vantage points. Now, that's kind of cool because it pays kind of a little bit of respect to that uh, history of the of Kong Min's Sky Lanterns being intended to alert and signal troop locations and whatnot. So it's kind of a, a nifty little uh, nod there. So again, this is using crane gunners. So I, I see that right there. Makes sense to me. 
Makes total sense. And a gondola. That I could I could call that a gondola. I mean, I think of like a gondola in Venice, but I'm not gonna go there. But <clears throat> Kong Ming Sky Junk. An invention of Shi Hong, Nang Gao's master war artificer, the Kong Ming Sky Junk is a wonder of the celestial army. As large as as a ship of the Jade Fleet, it is suspended in the air by a series of sky lanterns, its armored cradle able to turn aside arrows and bullets as its crew rain death down upon the enemies of the Empire. These great vessels can be seen defending the borders of the Grand Cathay, of Grand Cathay but are also used beyond the Great Bastion, where armadas of the Emperor's skyships have laid waste to the entire Marauder tribes. So, reading that, th there's a series of sky lanterns, it is an armored portion, but it's not a big ship. Like you can see, like the, the difference is really not that huge, right? And if we're saying that this thing is the size of a jade vessel or a, a ship, a large ship, as large as a ship of the jade fleet, what the hell kind of fleet is that? That's a little tiny dinky fleet. I wouldn't call these things an, an armada. I would call them a flight, you know, like this isn't a large imposing airship barreling down on someone. So I think that, I mean, this alludes to the fact that this is the Sky Lantern and this is the Sky Junk, but I just think that they're both Sky Lanterns in two different variations, one with crane gunners and one with a cannon on it. So that's my opinion. You guys can tell me if you feel that that's correct or if you feel like, hey, you know, maybe we are getting another uh, flying ship. And that will be the actual Sky Junk, and it will look like an actual junk. It'll be bigger and everything, because, like I said, junks are larger ships. They have three masts, so or more often than not, three masts. So I don't typically look at this thing as a junk, especially as it says, as large as a ship of the Jade Fleet. So <clears throat> a very interesting little bit there um, about the Kong Ming Sky Junk and the Sky Lantern. I'm excited to see if we actually get a full-fledged ship in the sky. That would be badass. Um, if that is the case, I expect the dwarfs to get it too. And as much as I don't like the dwarfs, I just have to be fair because they're so damn small anyway. So now that we've gone over the lore, let's talk a little bit about the third subject I want to go into, or I guess the next subject I want to go into, which is some speculation attached to what we've read so far. And we need to do some piecing together. We need to do some sleuthing. So as I hit the microphone. So again, we have the north, right? The North is established with Miao Ying. That is the master of the storm winds, um, the storm dragon, black being the prolific color here. Now, another bit is the West. We already know about the West, right? And that is portrayed by Zhao Ming. We have not heard much about him. We just know that he's kind of uh, a little obsessed with alchemy. He is a white colored dragon, or at least a tan colored dragon. When we, uh, we from the uh, artwork we've already seen, the, the screenshots we've already seen, and he's obsessed with alchemy. So, how does that play into things? Well, if we're talking again about the four uh, symbols, the west would be the color of white, the white tiger, and the north would be the black tortoise, and the color would be associated with black and with the uh, element of water. West being associated with the element of metal, metal, alchemy, put those two together. So I'm already seeing a pattern just looking at the north and the west. But if we look at the east, the east would be um, green. And the association with that would be wood. And east is where the actual coast lies, where all of the fleets and the ships would, would fall for Cathay. So when we look at this part, we see as large as a ship of the Jade Fleet. And that, I think, hints towards another one of the siblings being, <clears throat> well, it was the, the, the beast of that direction is at the Azure Dragon. And East, Spring, Green, Wood, Jade Fleet, I think that that all kind of plays together here because I think that that character would be based around something of i mean we don't really have naval battles right but i think it would be something around the rounds of like some sort of naval expedition or trade something of that sort so i'm going to go ahead and we're going to look at one more thing first too the last little bit here is the vermilion warbird and that is really really important because the beast of the south is called the vermilion bird so we're going to switch this picture here this is kind of what i'm talking about north black west white south red east green 
and these things all correlate like i've said so north here we have water west is metal east is wood and south you guessed it is fire so vermilion bird south red fire north again black and water and then east we have got um, green and wood and west we have got white and metal so we know north and west so i think that we'll probably hear about the eastern sibling brother or sister and the south could be pretty interesting we know that that is where uh, the monkey king fled to from the last lore entry regarding the monkey king so with that in mind do you think that we might get a dlc in which case that is a cathay and legendary lord from the south fighting against the monkey king do you think that maybe the monkey king took over the southern region and it's now chaotic and that's what he's going to be taking part of because that kind of fits that whole that whole situation with the south and this all kind of correlates into the uh like the fifth phase like the, the fifth aspect which is the dead center here which would be the yellow dragon of the center which would be the celestial dragon emperor if i was kind of trying to put point everything close everything together kind of close that loop so this might be far-fetched it's heavily speculative, right? But they've already mentioned the Vermilion Warbird. They've already mentioned uh, the Jade Fleet. So I think that this is a pretty heavy hint to go off of. And we have a lot of lore that's been being pumped out from Warhammer, or I'm sorry, from not Warhammer, from Games Workshop and from Creative Assembly. So hopefully we'll find out more about these uh, direction, these cardinal directions, and if they actually do hint towards other legendary lords, because we do have four legendary lords at the least for most of the other factions, and there's plenty of legendary lords to draw from for the Chaos Dwarfs, for the Ogre Kingdoms, for Kislev, for all the ruinous powers. But with Cathay, it's going to be a lot of homebrewed stuff, right? There are going to be a lot of brand new things we've not heard of, and. I know a lot of us during the speculation of Cathay, we had talked about, oh, Monkey King for sure is probably going to be one. Or uh, Dian Qian Ching. I, I, never, I never get his name right. But the character that is really heavily associated with Zinch. So those things are, have kind of been dismissed for these brand new characters. So it seems like they've really been hinting upon, or at least really using a lot of the sibling kind of rivalry and animosity to to kind of create the lore for Cathay. So I'm very interested to see how this goes and go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Do you think that, that this all makes sense? Uh, do you think that this is just kind of a little too harebrained? And on top of it, what the hell do you think about these lanterns and sky junks? I can't decide. I think a sky junk should be larger, although maybe they're saying that this is it. Um, but again, as always, guys, let me know what you're thinking in the comment section below. Very excited to go through more and more of the Cathayan lore as it comes out. It keeps just developing and developing, and I am stoked. I would like to see gameplay or a full-on roster reveal, something of the sort, something big here in September. I've said this in so many videos now, but we're coming up to the final, what, like 10 days, 9 days of... Uh, December, well, yeah, the 30th, the 30th is next week. So we still haven't heard anything about sieges. We haven't heard anything about the early adopter bonus. We haven't heard anything about any of the core mechanics coming from Cathay outside of the fact that they exist. These were things that were promised to us back in July. So I really would like to see at least one of those coming into the end of the month. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.